Hi guys, I'm Brooke. I'm Laura. And we are here with Lawyering Outside the Lines. Um, and today we're talking about ethically unbundling your legal services. So can it be done? Um, and just a little recap, we started talking about limited scope representation, also known as unbundled legal services. You'll hear us kind of use that interchangeably today. Um, but we started talking about that a little bit last week. And so this week we wanted to kind of dig into the ethics of it a little bit. So what exactly is uh, limited scope representation? I'll give a little recap for some of you who may not know. Limited scope representation is essentially when the lawyer handles discrete tasks and then delegates other tasks uh, to the client. So um, for example, the attorney may, you know, draft a petition or give some legal advice or, you know, make a limited appearance. Those are all limited things that they can do. And then they delegate to the clients with the administrative tasks. So those things are going to be filing with the court. Um, also, you know, making service and representing themselves sometimes in court. So those are some of the situations where you're going to use limited scope representation. And we're going to talk a little bit about how that you can ensure that you unbundle ethically. Exactly. And so how do you ensure that you unbundle your legal services ethically? We're going to go through a couple of different things. Um, and by a couple, I mean six. <laughs> We're going to go through six different things that you kind of need to consider um, to make sure that you're doing it ethically, because there's obviously a way to mess it up, just like there's a way to mess up everything, including full representation practice. Uh, so we just have uh, some six tips to for you guys to kind of look look at when you're trying to decide if unbundling or limited scope works for you. So how do you ensure you're unbundling ethically? Number one, you wanna consider if uh, limited scope representation is appropriate for your practice area or the specific area of practice that you want to offer it in. Uh, this is very important because there are gonna be some, um, some things that it's not appropriate for at all. For example, you know, we know some people who do limited appearances in criminal court, but with criminal cases, you know, you have to really, um, it, you know, that, that's a little bit more difficult to figure out how to be a criminal defense attorney um, on a limited scope basis. Sometimes with other things, again, you'll just have to decide for yourself, but also look at specific rules um, about whether or not you're allowed to limit your representation uh, for those practice areas. For us, we specifically handle transactional based um, practice areas that are often unbundled or limited scope, whether you think they are or not. So we do business law, we do estate planning, um, but we also offer litigation services on an unbundled basis with family law. So uh, if anybody wants to talk, you know, ask questions about that and how we do that, feel free because we have We've been doing it for over four years now and um, have figured out how to be really successful at it. So uh, so number one is, is it, you know, is it appropriate for the specific practice area that I want to offer it in? Number two, what are the rules in your jurisdiction? So that's going to be pretty easy to find and they may be really clearly defined or they may be really vague. So uh, in Arkansas, for example, um, we are not allowed to ghostwrite pleadings. We have to very specifically say at the end of every document, we put it in a, foot, a footnote, uh, like a, a footnote, not an end note, that this document was prepared with the assistance of Laura O'Brien, an Arkansas licensed attorney, um, in accordance with Rule 1.2C, um, because that's our specific rule that says that we have to say that we're allowed to unbundle our services. And there's another rule that says that we have to specifically identify ourselves if we're helping to ghostwrite. So you're going to have to look at your ethics rules. Your uh, like for us, it's not only in our rules of professional responsibility, but it's also in our civil procedure rules now. Um, Access to Justice here spent uh, three years trying to make sure that we were very clearly defined in Arkansas. Some states, like I said, are very clearly defined. Some states have specific rules, like I think Utah. Um, you're not allowed to limit the scope of your representation for things like uh, adoption hearings and, right. and you know, that kind of thing. So just make sure to do your research on what the rules are in your jurisdiction. Right. And different jurisdictions, just to add to that, um, have notice requirements for notice that you are representing in a limited capacity on other attorneys or on the court. So make sure that you look for those two. Um, they should be within your rules, but you want to make sure that there's nothing prohibiting you um, from just moving forward, either ghostwriting or simply doing what Laura said on the pleadings. Right. Um, 
the third thing, so that was the first and second. The third thing is um, to, to set adequate expectations with the client and make sure that you are communicating clearly. Also, hi, Dina, I see you down there. Uh, I'm glad so, I answered your question. So. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're gonna talk about that a little bit more, so hopefully we answer it a little bit better um, in just a minute. But uh, expectations are everything. Uh, most of us know that communication's huge complaint in our profession from clients that, um, you know, they don't feel like they are in the loop or the communication is not clear. So especially with limited scope, you want to make sure that your client is competent um, and that they fully understand the limitations of your representation. Uh, so you're going to want to upfront, make sure to evaluate their competency and their abilities. And you're also going to want to explain the process, give them, you know, resources, explain the options that they have and just really make sure that they have a clear understanding of the nature of your relationship and the scope of the services that you're going to be providing. You're also going to want to make sure that you can competently represent the client. So um, it's not that you can't unbundle things that you haven't done. There are several things that you can learn or, you know, resources for you to be able to add a practice area. Uh, but for us, when we started, it was, hey, let's unbundle the things that we know how to do, especially for our family law clients, because it's kind of difficult if you don't understand some of the nuances of at least litigation, not necessarily family law specific, to be able to, you know, tell a client what to expect when they're going to go into a courtroom. So you can do your research, but just make sure that you're competent in the services that you are unbundling um, and that you are communicating clearly with the client. Exactly. Um, it, the communication is obviously huge. Uh, we talk about that a lot and we're gonna continually talk about how communication is uh, almost enhanced when you're talking, when you're using technology and things like that uh, to communicate with your clients. But uh, to go along with kind of things that you need to, you know, be aware of if you're looking at unbundling your legal services, it's not just is, uh, is limited scope um, appropriate for this client or for a practice area, but is it appropriate for this specific matter? Um, this is something that we, um, we make sure that for us, we have a fairly in-depth conversation with our clients before we allow them to want to hire us, really. Um, and we have a good referral network if we send them out, uh, if we need to send them out to for a presentation. But you have to vet your clients really well, not just for their competency, but also for the specific case to see if it is even appropriate. I'm going to use divorce as an example here um, because we do handle family law matters. And I have in the past, um, I've owned my own domestic violence um, uh, family law firm. There are certain situations where if somebody really wants to fight or if somebody, um, you know, has a, a ton of issues, <coughs> it's especially if they really want to fight uh, it may not be appropriate to handle in a limited scope capacity because you're not actually sending them to court you're, you're you know you'd be doing a disservice to the client by preparing everything for them giving them instructions but then sending them to court without an attorney because you know the other side you know got that bulldog that we all love know and love um, uh, there I've seen license plates where people have bulldog as their license plate just uh, you want to make sure that they know that that you want to fight um, they'll help you with your fight so you need to vet that for the specific you know if if you know that that's an abusive person and they're gonna fight tooth and nail if your client if the, if the person the potential client you talk to uh, wants to fight tooth and nail may not be appropriate for uh, for um, a limited scope manner uh, matter. So it's not just the practice area; it's also the specific case itself. Uh, the biggest thing that we like to push, though, um, is make sure for yourself to cover yourself and to make sure that it's ethical. Number six is to make sure you have a very specific and adequate and comprehensive client agreement. So that's one of the most important things um, when you're talking about unbundling your legal services is to make sure that not only have you verbally talked to your client and set your expectations about, you know, here's what unbundled means here that here's how that works, but make sure that it's laid out very specifically in your client agreement. Our client agreement is about uh, three or four pages long and we make them actually not only sign at the bottom, but we make them initial next to certain items like, no apparent no court appearances that here are the documents that we're providing for you that if you know if anything is beyond this then you have to come back and either hire us again or you know that type of thing so 
that I've seen Arkansas Access to Justice here in Arkansas, they have examples of unbundled um, contracts, client agreements that you can look at. If anybody wants to just give a little shout out to Arkansas Access to Justice, <laughs> because they have a lot of examples that are very specific on what a client agreement can look like for unbundled services to make sure that it's ethical and that you're covered if the client ever comes back. I will mention we've never had a client come back and say, oh, I thought you were supposed to do this because we do set those expectations very clearly. So in over four years, we've never had, um, we have personally never had any kind of confusion on what our representation is for our clients. Sometimes it's judges that we have problems with. But again, we can, you know, fax over, uh, because we're in the end of times in Arkansas, we fax over the uh, the client agreement, and it very clearly lays out: here's what our role is. Here's you know they know what it is. So again, just you know, very very specific client agreement is going to help not only you um, you know cover kind of a CWA thing for you, but it also is a way to show to anybody who would file a complaint or anything like that. You know, the client understood this, they initialed next to it. Um, you know, it, this is this is was very clear um, in our agreement, in our understanding. And if you're in a place like Arkansas and you don't have a requirement to actually notify the court directly through a filing to be on or off the case, even in a limited matter, then we always tell our clients, hey, take your limited scope agreement with you to the court. So that way, you know, sometimes it's difficult, especially in certain circumstances, they're nervous or whatever. Um, it's difficult for them to explain exactly the nature of your relationship, even if they understand it. So if you have it clearly written down, um, like Laura said, sometimes we faxed it over if there's ever been an issue. But if there's an issue with another attorney um, on the other side or if there's an issue with someone at the court, they're able to say, here is my contract with my attorney. And it lays it all out in detail. So it actually takes that off of you, too. And um, it takes it off the client having to explain that relationship if, if the question comes up. Exactly. But um, thanks, April. Um, so yeah, the question was, can you ethically unbundle your legal services? And uh, from us, it's a resounding yes um, with all of the things that we told you to be considered um, as far as unbundling your specific practice. Um, but if you take these right steps, uh, then you definitely uh, have the ability to ethically unbundle. Um, and there's been some research, Laura and I talked about it a little bit yesterday. I don't have it right in front of me, but um, you know, Colorado has some research that you can look into about um, specifically liability. Cause we get this question a lot. So, you know, are, am I more liable? Uh, am I exposed to more liability because I'm offering these services? And um, for many reasons on another day um, that we'll talk about, uh, we don't think so, but um, Colorado actually has some statistics where they've actually looked at um, unbundled uh, attorneys providing limited scope services and found um, significantly less liability in their studies um, based on the group that they observed. So um, next week, Laura and I are actually going to be heading to ABA Tech Show in Chicago. So if any of you guys are there, we would love to connect. So reach out and let us know that you're coming. Um, We'll be in Wednesday to Saturday, so we're there. Um, we're taking a break uh, from our our live next week, and we are going to come back on March the 5th at noon Central Time, 1 Eastern Time, 11 Mountain Time, and 10 Pacific Time. And we are going to kind of do a recap of all the cool, fun stuff uh, that we find at uh, – tech show. So stay tuned from that. And you can follow us here. Um, we're also on Instagram at myvirtual.lawyer there. So you can follow us um, on our journey. We'll be posting about cool things. We'll be at the expo playing with all the cool new legal tech. So thanks for tuning in today and see you soon. Have a great week. Bye.